Welcome to the PAVE tutorial. My name is Amber and I would like to show you the basic functions of PAVE. PAVE is the abbreviation for PDF Accessibility Validation Engine and it is an online tool which you can use to make your own PDFs accessible to the blind and the visually impaired. PAVE was developed by the ICT Accessibility Lab of the School of Engineering in collaboration with the Swiss Association for the Blind and the Visually Impaired. Let's give PAVE a try. Click on Start PAVE to be redirected to the PAVE interface. This is where you can upload your own PDF document, either by dragging your document into the field or by clicking on Browse, as usual. The first page you will be directed to will give you some information of what has already happened. In the top text box, which is green and ticked, you can see that 55 issues have already been dealt with. What this means is the system has automatically removed some tags that will not be useful to the screen reader because when a PDF is produced, some of the tags are purely for the PDF structure and do not contain content that should later be read out. If you look at the top of the page, you can see the tabs to navigate between the different sections of this platform. Document settings, page view, download corrected file, and so on. We'll look at these in more detail later on. Now your document can be downloaded at any time. And data is also saved on the server for three weeks. But this only works if you don't delete your cookies. OK, so our initial issues have automatically been corrected. Now we can enter our document settings. Clicking on the tab, you can see that the file name is already entered. You can't edit this. But what you can enter and should indeed is the title. It is required. The next piece of information that is required is the language of the document. The program will make an assumption as to the language that your PDF is in. However, if it does differ, you can choose your language from the pick list. The other fields are not mandatory fields. You can enter information here if you wish, but do not need to do so. Remember to click Save. Good, we've entered our document settings. Now we can proceed to page view to do the rest. When you enter this view, you will receive a pop-up message. It will contain either the word simple or the word expert. This refers to the mode that you are in. Don't worry about this too much. The difference is only the amount of tags that are available in the different modes and the computer will decide itself whether your PDF requires the simple or the expert mode. One thing you should bear in mind, however, is not to go back from expert mode to simple mode, because if you do that, you may lose document information. Let's start tagging our PDF. Now, the most important piece of information you'll have in a PDF, as far as telling your listener what the text is about, will be your title. So to give this part a tag, we highlight it, and we have to choose heading level one. In this case, level one, because it is the main title in our document. And click add new tag. The text just below the title is our first body of text. So we can highlight this and tag it. But as you can see, when I highlight the text, it doesn't necessarily get all of the letters in one word. Words can be split into different parts. But as long as we highlight the whole paragraph, they will be tagged as one. So the body of the text is labeled paragraph. Let's add this new tag. And then the next heading we have is smaller than the previous one. And so we need to go down level. We'll highlight it and choose heading level 2 and add the new tag. So our next body of text is in two columns. If we're reading this ourselves, it's not a problem. However, software would read this from left to right. So it is possible that screen reader software would end up saying text in multiple columns can lead to if there are no tags in the simplest of cases, which is not going to help. To remedy this situation, we can tag the column 
as a paragraph. This means that it will be read out in one go before it goes to the other side of the page. Again, this is a paragraph. It doesn't matter that it's a column. And we add the tag. The next column, we can do exactly the same. Again, we have some separated tags there, but we can get them in there. Okay. And add the tag. When the screen reader goes through this, the order it will read it out in is the same as the order we can see on the left. So we have the heading, the paragraph, heading level 2, and we can see that our two columns are read out in the right order, from left to right. This is standard. If you want to change this order, you can do so simply by clicking and dragging the section to another place. In this scenario, though, that would not be the right order, so let's correct it quickly and put it back down. We have our next heading level 2. And then our next paragraph. That's right, that's fine. Add the new tag. As you can see, on the right-hand side of this PDF, we have an image. Images in PDFs can be particularly challenging to a blind or visually impaired audience because they carry value, but they can't be read out as such. They might be referred to in the text, so they are important. So we can label our apple by tagging it. We can highlight it and choose the tag figure. When we label something as a figure, it becomes apparent that it is important for the text, but so that it is read out as something, we need to give it a title in the alternative text to be entered in this field. Red apple, in this case. And we add the tag. And we can see on the left hand side that now, when the reader gets to the apple, it will be able to read out that we have one. Having tagged our apple, we can turn to the lists and tables section. The heading itself is a normal heading level 2. Let's tag that. And now we come to our list. We have bullet points here. But we can't just tag this immediately. To let the program know that we're dealing with a list, we move to the top of the page and click tag list. We can see that on the left hand side, a list wizard has opened up. Now we can highlight the text segments. So we highlight both parts of the bullet point, but not the bullet point itself. This is because a screen reader would read out the bullet point. It wouldn't be understandable, it would be technical model. Again, this is the body of the text, so it is a paragraph. Add the tag. And the second bullet point, the same again. On the left hand side, we can see that the beginning of each line has appeared. When we're happy with this, we can click Next. We have the option to add a caption at this point, but in this case, we don't need one, and so can click Next. We finished tagging our list. Let's save the changes. As you can see at the left hand side, the list has been entered as one element, but if we want to see the different sections, we can click on the plus. And so we have the two bullet points in the correct order. Now let's deal with our table. Much like for lists, we have a wizard for this too. If we click tag table at the top of the screen, we can open the wizard. The first thing we have to tell the program is how many rows we have. In this case, four. And how many columns? Five. There are also boxes we can tick to tell the program whether the first row is a header row or the first column is a header column. Both of these things are the case for our document. So let's tick our boxes. You can see that a grid has appeared. This is basically our table ready for us to fill in with our tags. Our first square is empty, so we can proceed to the next one by clicking in it and highlight calories as the first part. The text in a cell is also referred to as paragraph. And you can see that the yellow field jumps across automatically so that we can enter this information quickly.
In this case, for example, the A within the cell is not in the same part, but that's not a problem if we highlight both pieces and tag. You don't have to necessarily highlight the entire thing with your cursor. You can, as I'll show you, just click on it. So we've entered our information into the table cells and we can click next. Don't worry about the red writing. Now we can highlight our caption. On the right hand side we're tagging the caption and it's already preset for us to add the tag. You can see that the text here has an extra space. But this isn't a problem. It will still be read out accurately by the screen reader. So we can click Next. And Save. Our table is done. We've put in all of the tags that we want to be read out in the document. What we haven't done is taken out the ones we don't want. We can see on the right hand side that we still have some issues. Let's see what they are. Okay, so these are things that we need to get rid of, but rather than highlight them one by one, what we can do is mark them all together by highlighting the entire page from the left to the right and marking it as an artifact and add the tag. Oh, okay, so we've still got one issue. Where is it? Top right hand corner. These zeros and ones are decorative. We don't want them to be read out. So let's make sure they are definitely an artifact. There we go. Before we download our file, let's just check the order. Looks like our tags will be read out in the right order. So let's download the corrected file. Here we can see that our document contains no issues. Of course, if there were some left, we could go back and correct them. But in this case, we're ready to download the corrected file and open it. This PDF looks just like the old one, but will be better accessible. Thank you for your interest in PAVE. Should you require further information or if you wish to get in touch with us, please go to pave-pdf.org. Thank you and goodbye.